this woman was written in as an abused woman of this gangster and she was never supposed to find her power or be strong but I started slowly but surely kind of taking a few chances in how I play the character how mm -hmm. I address certain yes. lines whether you are a sangoma like people like me before it became so popularized mm -hmm. were people who were cursed uh, really? yes oh no way I didn't well, no, know that. no this was a taboo to embrace who you are you know we were labeled witches I guess you know okay. we are the kind of people where back in the day we would have been burnt on stakes. Kong. Kong Republic I like Kong. Speaking your truth on the mic Kong. Hit the subscribe and like Time to Kong Cause. Welcome to Concast here at Kong Republic. If you need a photo studio, if you need a recording studio, if you need a podcast studio, anything creative here at Kong Republic, we have you covered at an affordable rate. My name is Maddie Gray. I will be your host for today. This is your co-host Kush. What up guys? It's only a pleasure. We have an incredible guest for you today. But before we get started, I want to make sure you guys go and smash that subscribe button and don't forget to let us know what you think. Now, we have an incredible, popular actress, singer, who is featured as TD on Generations, The Legacy. Not only that, she is an incredible singer. She has a song, The One with DJ Cleo, and I Get Weak with DJ Cunis. She is an incredible singer and one of South Africa's most beloved actresses and influencers. Please welcome Latoya McKenna Puluma. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for being on the show, madam. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. We often like to start the show off with some icebreakers uh -huh. just to get the air running and everything. All right. So, Kush will we'll start it. us off. Yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> you're, you're in a burning house, all right? It's just you there, no children, no dogs, all right? And you got time to take three items. Mm -hmm. What three items would you take? The first one will be my umtuntu. Okay. Uh, my umtuntu is a very <laughs> sacred traditional. Um, basket that we have as traditional healers because okay. I am also yes, a yes, we, we do know that. I would take my umtuntu. I would take my. You say I've got no children, no wife, anything in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, just you there I in would a body. My umtuntu. I would take my shoba, and I would take. My phone. Mm. Uh -huh. well, what's a shoba? Huh? A shoba is also something that you come out of initiation school with ah. to confirm and affirm that you are a fully fledged sangoma. Ah, okay. And you are grown. You are in your 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 bunyanga. You are in your traditional space. You have taken everything, mm. and you have been on this very hard journey yeah. to embracing your calling. Very cool, very it's cool. Beautiful. Yeah. My icebreaker would be if a genie could grant you any three wishes in the world, what would they be? Number one, for my music career to get the traction that it should worldwide. For my career as um, a film star to get recognition worldwide and for me to be on big film sets with big actors. And, oh, also for those billions of mine to like, just like find their way into my account, <laughs> how, whether it's through marriage, whether it's through my hits, <laughs> them billions need to find their way into my account. The incredible career and making sure you are financially successful. Absolutely. So we're going to get into the questions. And I'm going to go right first, all right? And what, what I'm going to start from is like, you started singing at a young, ripe age of seven years old. You were a backup singer for the late and great Brenda Farsi. Well, you know, I beg to differ. Yeah. You know, it's how they've, they've captioned the story. Because yeah. there was never a backup vocal, vocalist for her. Yeah, yeah. But I did feature in one of her music videos at the age of seven where I was a backup vocalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but from that age, there were... There was a lot of live shows that I did do mm. with my father, and I had a lot of the greats on stage with me mm. Mm. as well. Your Lucky Dubez, your Yvonne Chaka Chakas, your Brenda Fassis. I've shared stages wow. with them because I've been on big stages mm. from the age of nine with my dad. Mm. 
Um, so that did make it possible. But I did officially record a track mm. with Auntie Brenda, Brenda Fussy, mm. at the age of 17. And, and how was that experience working with her? It was beautiful. It mm. was as beautiful and as crazy as working with Auntie Brenda, as mm. you can imagine working with her would be. Yeah. It was a beautiful creative space to be in. She literally gave me so much creative freedom. I was like, you know on the edge of my seat that, yeah. my gosh, this is finally happening. I'm finally recording a track with her. Yeah. And uh, she was just like, listen here, kid, you have known how to do this. Yeah. You've known how to sing before you could speak. I tr trust your creative freedom and your creative abilities, and I'm giving you creative freedom. So that was really beautiful to have someone at her level and at her league literally say to me, you've got this, I believe in you. I'm not going to give you direction. You're going to give me direction. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Wow. Spe yeah. Speaking on creative endeavors, you've been involved in creative endeavors for quite some time. Yeah. But I would like to ask, what exactly sparked your ambition and passion for music? Uh, like I was saying, you know, music was just one of those things that was inbred. It's one of those things that were not just sparked because of my surroundings, because I come from a family of musicians and great musicians, people who have contributed uh, in the most beautiful way to the music and the successes of the music in this country. Um, I am the daughter of Blondie McKenna, but apparently, you know, the one time they would have issues with me falling asleep is if there wasn't music playing and if they didn't have me lying next to the speaker. That is the one way they could knock me out. And so I guess music has always just vibrated in my soul um, it's just vibrated with my heart. It's just been that thing that has always been within me. The one thing I fell into is the acting side of things, even though my acting side of things are just like way bigger and more explosive than the music. But music has just always been a big part of my, my life and my soul. Music is my first love. Beautiful. But talking about, you know, music being your first love, I mean, your dad is Blondie McKenna. I mean, he's a legend, you know, yeah. he, he's a legend. Uh, you know, anybody who knows anything about music knows him. Yeah. So how's it growing up with your father being, you know, because he's just not, he's not a normal person, you know, yeah. he's not. Yeah. A, and, and, and you experience this like from such a young age, how has it affected and in a positive way, your take on music because you don't have the same take a normal child would have you know no I wouldn't because you know when my dad started seeing me knocking on music doors mm -hmm. music stores uh, he didn't want that for his kids you know he didn't want his kids to be in this creative space that you know requires you to put in a lot of work and today you could be working tomorrow you could be out of work he didn't want that for us he mm -hmm. was really hoping that we would take a different path we'd be in corporate you know doctors lawyers and really? whatever yeah no way something more stable yeah, for yeah. his children yeah. something not in the line of his his co career uh, but he saw that the music bug had bit me from mm -hmm. a very young age and you know i was very blessed that he went from saying, I don't want you guys to do this, to saying, okay, I can see if I don't support this one, she's going to end up finding someone to help her with it anyway. Mm -hmm. So he was very much my musical coach, mm -hmm. my musical director. It's been beautiful to have a full-time musical coach in the house with me. And mm -hmm. I think that has played um, really very well for me. Um, but it's had its pros and it's got its cons as well because, mm. you know, when I decided I wanted to sing and I wanted to be in the industry, basically my father supported me so much that I even started having very little playtime, mm. you mm. know, and time to be with other children. And my time with other children always revolved a lot around the work that I was doing with him. Mm. Mm. So I was literally a working child from a very young age. Um, but I love it. Well, maybe, I love it. Would you say um, it's because of your dad, uh, you know, you're so successful in terms of your own right. And, and I'm not just saying on the museum, I'm just talking about the acting as well, because he gave you that work. Ethic. And, yes, the work Absolutely. ethic. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. For mm. my father, it's, there's no half ways about what you do. Mm. If you're going to be in the music industry and you, or you're going to be acting or you're going to be a voiceover artist, whatever it is that you're doing, or you're a writer, you're going to do it with all your heart. Mm. Um, basically, I've learned at a very, very young age that if I was supposed to be on stage at a certain time or at a certain point or at a certain show, just because I'm feeling groggy and I'm feeling tired or I'm feeling a little off the weather, 
it doesn't mean that I don't get to perform. Mm. He would literally say to me, I love you, baby. You wanted to do this. Your only excuse for not getting up on that stage is that you're dead. Oh, wow. So get up and go and do what you came here to do. <laughs> People are waiting for you. They came here to see you. You will rest after your show. And you've worked with quite a few individuals too, including DJ Cleo and DJ Cunis. Tell yeah. us about this experience working with other individuals outside of the influences of your family. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love, I love being in creative spaces. I love bouncing off other people's creative energies. Um, you know, DJ Cleo is, is great. He's a really great creative energy. Of, he knows what he wants. He's very specific about what he wants. Um, he, he, you know, with him, working with him was working with a producer who ca came there and he knew exactly what he wanted. So there was space to play, but there was also very little space to play because he knew exactly what he wanted. With Kunis, it was a lot of creative freedom. He came in there, he had a beat. I wrote the song from beginning to end and we just gelled like that. It was, it's been absolutely amazing working with these young cats that have taken over the industry. You know, they are so inspiring. It is so beautiful to see people my age taking their gifts as seriously as I do. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really is a beautiful yeah. thing. Surrounding yourself with individuals as not only just as creative, but also as hardworking, as yeah. you said, as yourself, creates magic. Well, you know, you know, talking about hard work and, you know, I have to mention your last song just on YouTube alone had over 700,000 views just on YouTube alone. And, um, you know, I'm scared to butcher the name, but uh, it means sympathies or feel sorry for me in English. How do I produce? Feel what? for me, yes. Yeah. Nihaugele. 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 All right. It's, it speaks of... Um, your journey with self, with yeah. spirit, yeah, with yeah. God, whatever God is for you, the universe, mm. however you want to, whatever God is to you, mm. right? Mm. I'm not speaking about my God or how I see God. It is who God is to you, mm. who your spirit guides are to you. And it is a song that says, you know, these are gifts that I've been given. Mm. This is a calling that I've been given. I didn't ask for this. Mm. So I'm going to ask you to help me through, to carry me through. Mm everything that you have given me. I can't do this alone. No, that's you've given me gifts and you've got to carry me through this. I mean, that, that's absolutely beautiful. But like, did you know it was going to be such a success in the no. studio? No. Like, you know, it's a song that's always meant a lot to me, yeah. even at initiation school. Yeah. It was one of those songs that always struck a chord in mm. my heart. Mm. Um, and it's just one of those melodies that you can just never get out of your soul or your spirit. Yeah. So... Whether it was going to be a success or not, people around me said it, the song is huge. I still feel like we could have gone much further when it comes to marketing, you know. But mm -hmm. we are also dealing with a lot of technicalities, mm -hmm. you know, technicalities from distributors within the industry or, or, or. Mm. And at the end of the day, it's always easier to release and record any album or any single if you're doing it through a major record label because mm -hmm. they're always going to be pumping a lot of money into you even though they're going to be making their money back right mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing it independently through your own record label mm -hmm. you are doing it and you understand the m business of music and you understand your brand and you understand yourself as a business mm. but it doesn't mean that you always have all the capital to throw into yourself because you are doing it independently mm. and to be able to get out there there's a lot of capital that goes into an artist for an artist to be in people's faces mm -hmm. you know I mean a simple thing like even getting radio airplay mm -hmm. in this country is not a very easy thing because it's very easy for for, you know, your radio compilers are very easily swayed by other people. You can have another record label see that you're a threat as an artist to their artists who they want to release. So mm. they'll very happily pay a compiler, music compiler, to shelve your music and for you to not get airplay. Oh, wow. Little things mm. like those. Yeah. You know, it's a game. It's a game of chess. And you either at the top of the game or at the top of the league or you mm. are not. And... 
yeah, they've, we've had some things work against us, but it's been worth it. But I mean, like 700,000 views and I mean, there's no video to it. I mean, there's just an album where that's successful. Know, right? That's very successful, ma'am. I mean, in your own right, that's amazing. I want to ask you, in terms of the recording process, like, did you know this was like something really special, not only to you, but like to the world when you when you was actually recording this? Yeah. Every song that I yeah. do for me is really special. Yeah. Every process I go through in how I got to even writing that song or recording or contributing as an artist to a song is extremely special for me because... Mm -hmm. Songs come from so many different places for me and they come from so many different experiences or there's something new that might have sparked um, the, the birth of a certain song. So every experience really for me is a great one. But I never ever go into studio and say to myself, oh my gosh, this song is my hit. This is No, 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 no. I just put my soul and everything that I have into every song. Which song is going to be the hit is going to be decided on, I guess, by... The people mm. Mm. You, you and by your, your record label execs yeah. and you know you really sound like you put your soul and spirit into everything that you do i really do prior, prior to um embarking seriously on your spiritual journey you, you decided to go down the route of acting although you've always been a spiritual individual what, yeah. what made you decide to go down this path well um like I said, I was always a creative. I was always a music person. And then, uh, but at school, I was, primary school, I was always, you know, in choir and drama. And and and, and um, I was the biggest creative there. I mean, I got full colors for creative arts in primary school. And that's an award that no one had gotten in probably like 30 years in that school. Oh, wow. And my drama teacher just said to me, I know exactly which school you should go to. Um, I'm literally going to go and get the papers. You need to tell your parents that they need to enroll you into NSA for high school. Um, but prior to getting to NSA, I was already getting gigs. I mean, there was agents that were spotting me. I was already acting, you know, doing a little stint in Soul Buddies at the age of 12. Um, I was already on the road as a presenter, going to Paris to be... Uh, the presenter for the Disney UNESCO Children's Summit, mm -hmm. you know, at the age of 11. So I had already been very busy. And then suddenly an audition would come in to say, hey, there's a role for this and that. Are you interested? And I would say, yeah, let me give it a go. Mm -hmm. But I did go to the National School of the Arts to study drama. And outside of drama, I was also studying contemporary music at the National School of the Arts. So I kind of basically just did everything that was coming my way that felt good to me. Um, it only made sense. I was, it made sense. Yeah. I was blessed to get work in as, as an actor. I was blessed to get work as a presenter, as a, a VJ, as um, in these roles that I was getting work in. But my calling was my calling, and I couldn't run away from that either. So when that happened, I... I needed to listen. I needed to take time and just listen to spirit and give spirit time and, yeah, and just get back into the game. Yeah, but talk, <laughs> talking about getting back into the game, right? In 2014, um, you began your role on uh, the reboot series uh, Generations uh, Legacy. Right. All right. Uh, tell us about how this opportunity came to be because it was quite a big one, hey? It was a huge one. Yeah. And remember, it came at a time where there was a lot of controversy. Yeah. There was a lot of the industry wasn't happy necessarily with mm. the production company. Some were not happy with the actors. There was a lot of things that we as the new cast, the mm. generations, the legacy walked into. Mm. Um, I guess we also walked into people within the industry really not liking us or snubbing us because we were not supposed to, we, we were according to the industry not supposed to take these roles. Uh, according to the industry, we should have uh, walked away from these roles. Really? But as far as I'm concerned, mm. this is not just one pr a, pr a, a, a problem mm. with one production company. Mm. This is a problem within the industry. Mm. So you're expecting me to not take work here from this production company, but the production company you're working with is still pretty much operating in the same way. Mm. And for me, it was an audition process. Mm -hmm. It was an open audition by the way. Mm -hmm. So there were 
hundreds and thousands of people there. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah. Oh, wow. And one of the biggest things when it was my turn to go in was the casting director who walked out and went, oh, my goodness, mm. Latoya, you're here. Why didn't you say you're here? We would have let you in sooner. Mm. And, you know, I just thought, I was just, I was just like, it's okay. Mm. I'm, I'm coming in now, you know? I just didn't want to come in there with Diva Antiques. I figured that wouldn't help me even get the job. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. They've already mm. gone through something that has traumatized them. Imagine now auditioning someone who's coming in and saying, listen, I'm here. I want my turn to get in. Mm. Mm, it's not a way to build relationships with people, but I went for the first audition. Uh, by the time I came back, uh, they had pretty much decided on me, but they just needed to find a suitable husband for me. Mm. And this is where they started now auditioning for uh, the husband, who is Kumkani, mm. Gaddafi on Generations. And yeah, the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Beautiful. You, it's incredible that you can remain so humble, even though you have so many experiences under your belt. Thank but I think you. this is an incredible time for us to take a quick ad break. We will be back in a second. This is Concast at Kong Republic. We will see you soon. Now, for a limited time, get your exclusive photo shoot for only 2,450 Rand and get a free A1 canvas print. This special includes 20 high resolution images, 3 hours of editing and retouching, 2 background options of your choice, includes photographer, gear hire, assistant, and refreshments. Get your exclusive photo shoot done at Kong Republic Studios based here in Kyalami Midrand. Welcome back to Concast at Kong Republic, where any creative needs you need done, we can get done at an affordable price, whether it be photography studios, whether it be a podcast studio, recording studio, anything you need, we can accommodate. We are here with myself, Maddie Gray. I will be your main host, and I still am. This is Kush. He is my co-host, and we are here with Latoya Pulumo. Your role as TD much praise Oy. from many 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 people <laughs> what impact did this specific role have on your career moving forward huge impact you know um it allowed producers and directors and casting directors to see that this um bubble that they're trying to keep me in which is what we call typecasting is something that they should not try to ever keep me in typecasting is when mm, you get cast for the same kind of character, doesn't matter mm. what you do. Mm. Uh, you know, Maddie, you look too sweet or you've got too much of a comedian side to you, so we are never going to consider you for this action role or for this drama role. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are. And playing this role kept, took me out of what they were trying to box me into, which was sweet, and, you know, mm. sweet mommy roles, just sweet, angelic all the time. Um, they just said, I am too good a girl to play any uh, villain. And this character really became the game changer for me because this is where the industry realized there's nothing this woman can't do. We have been boxing her into certain kind of characters for a long time, but gosh, we should have given her this role. We should have given her this other role. Now I'm being cast for so many different types of role. People don't think twice about bringing me on as a villain on anything, which is great. And CD allowed me to do that. She allowed me to have so much color as an actor and she became a character that I could add so many colors to that she really, really showcased my true talents. I mean, this woman was written in as an abused woman of this gangster, and she was never supposed to find her power or be strong. But I started slowly but surely kind of taking a few chances in how I play the character, how mm -hmm. I address certain lies, lines. And that kind of gave the writers and producers inspiration to maybe look at writing a little differently for me because they just realized that they can't keep me trapped up. They can't keep me trapped. You're allowed to showcase your diversity. They, they needed yeah. to allow me to play and they needed to write scripts that were juicy for me because I could run with them. And that was what this character has done for me. And I will love her forever for that. 
She was fun to play. <laughs> she was fun. It must feel amazing being able to finally like feel, you feel like you've been put into such a role. And now for the first time you're able to like, yes, this is it. Yeah. This is my time to be able to show yeah. what I'm truly able to do. And not even just capping yourself to that. Yeah. You're so, there's, I'm sure there's still many other characters and roles you have the ability to play as well. There are. I can't wait for the other roles that are coming my way. And I'm so glad for um, the two shows that I've shot so far. One is a film and the other one is a docky film. And yeah. <laughs> Almost like excited. a reality show. Uh, no. Well, no. the reality show yeah. is in the pipelines, yeah, but yeah. I don't want to jinx it and say too much about okay, it. Okay, cool, 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 <laughs> cool. But ma'am, let's, let's talk about, you know, through your years of being an actor, you have gained a lot of uh, popularity, especially on social media. Yeah. And, I, and I just, this is absolutely insane. So it's 840,000 people on Instagram. 1.5 million people on Facebook, uh, you know, and, th and, and it obviously goes on. But like, tell me something, as an actor in, in today's industry, like we say it, all right, how important is social media? It's extremely important. Uh, the world has gone digital. Mm. Um, you know, I'm one of those people who write in the beginning of social media, I've always been so big on my privacy, you know, and I had to have business affairs really beat it into my head to say, listen here, you are not, you don't have social media pages. Then I'd open mm -hmm. a social media page, but I just wouldn't post. And they'd say, you're not active on your social media pages. And I'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. can I just do my job, go in and act and be great and like not have to be so personal mm. you know because this is how I've always protected and guarded myself and my family and been able to have a private life within the space mm. and I just realized you know you're fighting a stupid fight Toya mm. um, either you're gonna join them beat them or join them mm. and I then decided to really really start taking my social media more seriously because I realized this digital world is what gives us a, a reach it's mm. what makes us accessible to our audiences. Mm. It what what puts us out there when people are looking for actors, singers, creatives, or whatever influences in a certain space. Mm. They're going to go to your social media. So I think it's very, very important for our social media to stay active and for mm. us to be clever about the types of things that we post there. Mm. You know what we say about ourselves, what we say about people, what we're trying to project, the image we're trying to project. Um, it's a very powerful tool and basically we have power in the form of media right at the tips of our fingers. Mm, you can't mm. go wrong with it. Mm, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane. You know, it's, it's, it's cool that you're so uh, positive because, you know, we, we, we speak to a lot of people and some people is intimidated by it, you know, yeah. uh, uh, social media, but you actually embracing it. Yeah. So that that's great, you know. That's great that you you know you took something and you know, at first it was a, it, you, you you was really worried, especially about like privacy, but now it's something you embrace and you see, and you see mm -hmm. it's something like really needed for your career. And we totally agree on that as well. You know, social media is a big thing. This is for social media, you right, know. So, so right. you know, like uh, I, I 100% agree that social media is changing the way, uh, you know, things is happening. If you look at, um, uh, well, uh, there's um, a YouTube channel. I don't know where you heard of the gentleman. He's called Mr. Beast. And um, there's big production like HBOs and stuff like that. And he did a remake of... Um, one of HBO's shows, and that show was... Um, uh, that's a redid Squid Games Yeah, well. Squid Games, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a show, yeah, that's a show I'm talking about. And Squid nice. Games yeah. garnished 300... It and, was big. Yeah, 380 million, um, 380 million views around the world. But Mr. Beast did like a remake of that, and he garnished over 400 million views wow. on YouTube alone. Wow. So, so yeah, we, we, we do understand that everything's changing, it's becoming more accessible, and it's actually becoming easier, you know? Yeah. There's no what, gatekeepers that you have to go through. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, it's, it's a very exciting time we live in. And we, yeah. we, we touched on embracing ourselves on social media. You, you embraced your, uh, a certain calling that happened to you. You gracefully left uh, generations to start focusing on your music. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's I, not an easy decision. But generation mm-hmm. is not like a small corner show. It's, yeah. it's a massive thing. So I'm sure it was it it, it was a, it was a serious decision. You yeah. Know? And it wasn't an easy one. Yeah. You know? But uh, it's amazing that you took that risk and you did that. You know. You have to sometimes take risks. You know because. Um, you know, being in a soapy and playing the kind of character that I was playing is not child's play. Mm. I literally work more than 12 hours a day every single day. Mm. Mine is the kind of character that writers couldn't stop writing for. So my downtime on that show was really very little in comparison to a lot of other actors and a lot of other lead actors. And I was getting very burnt out, um, very fatigued, but I would still keep going. Mm. Um and, but, but I, I could feel something in me shifting a bit. And when that feeling happens, I've got to really sit with myself and decide what it is that I need to do. Mm. And so I wanted to give myself a bit more time on the music because we shoot Monday to Friday, but on the weekends, you've got other invitations and other mm. things that you've got to honor. And so you never have time to just sit with your music, to sit and write, to sit and be in studio, to create something else Mm -hmm. for your family, you know? And for me, music is the one way I'm going to be able to create um, an empire and create more to leave for my children Mm -hmm. when I'm one day not here. Mm -hmm. But as long as I'm constantly just an actor and putting millions in producers' pockets, Mm -hmm. that's really all I am building, you know? And... My industry is, it's still, it's still free, freelance. You know, we might have yearly contracts, but we are still freelancers. Mm-hmm. And anyone can decide to wake up and decide tomorrow that they're writing you out. Mm-hmm. You know, so where is my stability there? Mm-hmm. So I've just needed to, I'm at the age, I'm 38 now, mm-hmm. where I've needed to just create a little more stability mm-hmm. for myself, for my family, for my future, mm-hmm. for their future, instead of, just being famous and it being mm. nice and then you wake up one day and then you've got absolutely nothing mm. and you haven't st- taken time out to build something worthwhile. Your own story. Your own story. Mm. I mm. like that. Mm. Yeah. Your own story. <laughs> nice, Maddie. But uh, you reveal to Drum that, you know, this is not just uh, a career decision moving to music. It was almost like a spiritual kind of calling to kind of go towards that direction. Can you elaborate more on that? You know? Music is exactly that for me. Mm. Music, mm. like my mm, song on my spiritual calling, like my acting, it's all spiritual callings for me. Mm. Um, to be able to take a character and be the embodiment of a certain character and bring that character to life, I think is it's, you've got to take yourself through spiritual phases because now you've got to come out of who you are as a person and create a new personality for a character. I think it's a spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. Music is spiritual. You know, writing music, it, it's a spiritual journey. For, for me, creativity is the closest thing to God, mm. basically. Oh, wow. Okay. You know? And I agree with you. I understand. It is. You, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Doing, <laughs> and and, and, and be doing a little bit of research, it seems like there's been a lot of anticipation and excitement around a possible album or project you may be working I, on. I, <laughs> yes. Is this, uh, is this something that you're still currently working on? Yes. Yes. I need to, I need to finish now. There you have it. I need to finish. <laughs> I need to finish. Yeah. But yes. But it yes. seems like you're perfectionist, madam. Yes, I'm a Virgo. Too. Oh, you're Virgo. Okay, well, yeah. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Is, yeah. it's, it's born in me. I, I am. And, and, you know, being a perfectionist, you, you won't just let go of anything if you're not happy with it. Mm-hmm. Even a little thing will affect you, mm-hmm. something tiny. Yeah. So, so I, I can imagine doing an album is not an easy task, mm. eh? It's not. It's not. It's not. But I'm also... I'm I'm not difficult to work with either. Mm, I'm a mm. perfectionist, but I'm very big on on, on respecting some, someone else's creative process. So mm, I'm not mm. so um, such a perfectionist that I would kill your creativity. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I don't believe in killing people's creativity process. It's, it's like joint. the worst thing you can do to someone. It's a joint process. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a perfect way to end off this current part. We're going to go straight into the ad break now. We'll be back in a second on Kong Caused at Kong Republic. We'll see you soon. 
Now, for a limited time, get your exclusive photo shoot for only 2,450 Rand and get a free A1 canvas print. This special includes 20 high resolution images, 3 hours of editing and retouching, 2 background options of your choice, includes photographer, gear hire, assistant, and refreshments. Get your exclusive photo shoot done at Kong Republic Studios based here in Kyalami Midrand. Welcome back to Concast at Kong Republic, where any creative endeavors you need done, we can get that covered for you at an affordable price. We are here with the amazing Latoya. We have Kirsch here next to me as my co-host. I am Maddie Gray. We're going to jump right back into the questions. But just before we do, I need to make sure you go and smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to let us know what you think. Cool. So let's get right into it. So, ma'am, we know uh, you're a mother of four beautiful children. Mm -hmm. How do you manage... Like, because, you know, being creative, and, and I was speaking to the guys about this earlier, you know, being creative, I mean, you even mentioned this earlier uh, about your dad, there's so much more work involved compared to like being a, a lawyer or being a norm, having a normal nine to five. Being creative, there's never a nine to five. Yeah. So you're always working extra and there's so much more time involved. I mean, mm. especially that you're doing music and acting, you're burning the candle on both sides, you yep. know? How do you manage to find that balance between work and play and family and professional life? How do you manage to keep that like at bay? Sure. You know, and the craziest thing is I've got four children that I've given birth to, <laughs> but I've got three extra children as well oh, okay. through marriage. Yeah. So I've got seven children, <laughs> actually. <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, it's time management. Mm. Um, as much as you can't really manage that time, you've got to manage it at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, for me, my family time is my family time. Work time is work time. Mm. And if I've just got to be in there and burn the midnight oil, I've got to do that. Mm. And, but also having a team that understands how much I'm working and understands that they can't burn me out completely because there's just so much that we need to do is also a great thing. You know, um, I've got a team that really takes on a lot on their shoulders mm -hmm. just to help me take less on my shoulders. And I think having a great team and time management is just the best that you can do. Yes, mm -hmm. there is no nine to five, but you can actually have a schedule even within that creative schedule, mm -hmm. you know? Even in your busy schedule, um, you still manage time to try and motivate people. You have an incredible marriage with your with your wife. Mm -hmm. You participate in LGBTQ community mm -hmm. uh, events. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give to any young individuals going through certain things, a part of the LGBTQ community that may face negative opinions from others? Sure. You know, at the end of the day, we've all come onto this earth to live our life. Yes, we come through our parents. Yes, we do have families and siblings and sisters. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we are born alone, we will die alone. And I think the most important thing is to start sitting with yourself and deciding for yourself what is important to you. Because if you're gonna live a life of what he said, what she's gonna say, I've gotta hide, then you're gonna be living in turmoil for a very long time. I think it's important for us to be able to embrace ourselves for who we are before we can even want the next person to embrace us for who we are. Mm. Whether you are coming from the LGBTQI community, whether you are a Sangoma, like people like me before it became so popularized, mm. were people who were cursed, you know. Uh, really? Yes. Oh, no way. I didn't well, know no, that. no, this was a taboo yeah. to embrace your calling, um, to embrace who you are. You know, we were labeled witches, I guess, you know. Okay. We are the kind of people where back in the day we would have been burnt on stakes instead of people seeing us for who we are. So if I lived a life of thinking about what the world is going to say, I'd mm. be nowhere. I would have made nothing of myself. Mm. I would not have fallen in love and embraced this love that I have um, as openly and as beautifully as I did, I would not have embraced my spiritual gifts like I have. I would not have even been able to sing and to act and to do everything that I do mm. because you are always living in the shadow of what are people gonna say. Mm. And I think the minute we can break those habits is where we have 
began to win the first battle with ourselves mm. psychologically. You're quite inspirational, you know. That. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, Incredibly yeah, I mean, inspirational. I'm just, feeling yeah, this yeah, energy. Yeah, yes, no, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, ma'am, uh, you know, I've been on so many productions and playing so many characters. I mean, like, I know you also have, um, you know, and I don't want to spill too much away, but I know you got a show in the making, a reality show. How involved are you in your productions? Ab very involved, especially this one, because... Yeah. Um, for, you know, it's hectic enough to have a family that the world wants to zoom into. You know, mm -hmm. people really want to zoom in mm -hmm. on our lives. People are curious as to, like, what happens behind closed doors outside of what we see on social media? Mm -hmm. um, what happens with these two women that were previously married to men and mm -hmm. now they've come together, they've built their own families with their children People are curious. People are interested. Mm. Um, but we also needed to have full control over this production because we know how mm. silly producers can be and how they will do anything to sell the juice mm. at times. And, and it's for, true, the truth. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was very important for us to be able to protect our children, our family, our household through all of this. So... In our contract, we basically are the executive producers. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Do, do, do you find it hard being the producer and and the, the, the main kind of creative and talent in, in the job? Because, I mean, now you're, now, now you're doing both. both. You're yeah. sitting in edits. You, you're looking at, uh, you know, is this the right way to do it? I mean, you know. Well, I don't find it hard. Do you know, even in my music, I sit in my edits. Mm. I sit in the edits in studio. I sit in the edits after my music has been shot. Mm. Because, not because I'm a control freak. <laughs> not because I'm a control freak, but because... It's important to get the vision right. 100%. You know, and sometimes you, you've shot an amazing video, but your editor hasn't really quite gotten the vision. So sometimes it's nice to sit in there with him and you say like, how would, we, would you feel about us moving this here, this mm. way, or bringing this, this side? I think those are very important processes mm. to go through for any artist. So you enjoy all of that processes. You don't just I really enjoy do. Oh, that's fantastic. I really, really do. So you see, you know, you're actually doing your true calling then, you know, it's 100%. That's, that's amazing. And you know? yet I still feel like there's just so much room for so much more. I'm sure there like, is, yeah. Yeah. Just from this little time, I know there's so much more. Yeah. You know? I mean, and, and being a spiritual person um, and a healer and a sangoma, mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with, uh, or how do you at least remain motivated against people that may be skeptical about your gift? The naysayers, the like you said, you know? I've just never heard them. Mm -hmm. You must understand, I was already open about the fact. And when I say open, I would openly wear my my beads, my spandlers, whatever I am, whatever mm. represents who I am mm. as a Sangoma, I've always literally, openly been that person. Um, I, and this was even before it became so fashionable. Right now, we are going through this big, beautiful, fashionable phase of being a Sangoma. Like, even those who don't have a calling feel like they deserve to have a calling and they want callings. And so now we're sitting on the fence of the fake healers mm. in comparison to the real healers. Yeah, yeah. But it's become very fashionable now. It's like one of those things that people want to be. Mm. And so, like I said, it goes in the one ear for me, it goes out the other. You don't put food on my table. You don't buy my, my, pay my children's school fees. You are not sitting with me in my house. So why must I care that you care about mm -hmm. me and my calling mm -hmm. and pay who no I mind. am? Pay no mind. You know? Mm. People yeah, well, will talk, whether you do good or bad. Yeah. People will talk. Yeah, they, you know, they say you can please um, most of the people most of the time, but you cannot please all the people all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think the, as long as you've been able to please yourself mm. and your God, mm. that's all you that's need. All you need eh? That's all you need. That's all you need. That's amazing. Eh? But ma'am, on top of, you know, you've been a musician, a Sangoma, an actor, a mother, an inspirational person, just you know, all in all. You're also a businesswoman, you know? Uh, you, 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 you're a director, you've got two companies, HOK and LMF. Can you tell me more about your businesses? HOK is uh, House of Kwedi. Okay. House of Kwedi is where I, the, it holds the umbrella of my work as a Sangoma mm -hmm. because I have gone very 
corporate about my work mm, as mm. a traditional healer. So I make products. I make beautiful, beautiful bath products, face washes, face body products. Um, no way. Really? Uh, yes. Oh, that's but so dope. Muti infused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you keep going to these shops where they say, yeah, no, this soap, it has this muti, this soap is for cleansing, mm. this one is for luck. And, you know, I've walked into shops and I'm just like, why are they cheating people out mm. of the, the health they're coming to pay for? Mm. So I've literally taken these soaps and bubble baths and body washes mm. and salts and, and I've infused them and I've packaged them beautifully and you can order them online, you know? And it was great that people could access these things online because COVID made it very difficult for um, a lot of my patients to... Um, for me to be accessible to them, mm -hmm. you know, and it also basically mostly started with a tonic that I was making, mm -hmm. uh, which we call a imbiza, but mm -hmm. it's a tonic. Mm -hmm. And my spirit guides came to me during COVID and said, listen, put this together, mix this, mix this, mix this, mix this. This is what you guys are going to drink. Mm -hmm. And in my home, between my family and I, we've just never been positive. We've never had COVID. Um, I was always very healthy. I would be in spaces with people, on set shooting with people who don't know they're, po uh, they're mm -hmm. positive. Mm -hmm. And the next day they don't come into work, what's wrong, they're sick. Mm -hmm. And I still test negative. Mm -hmm. And this tonic is something that has, that my patients started getting, mm, you know, they were like very interested in getting it. Some of them would be sitting with husbands who are five to being admitted into hospital because their bodies just were not coping. And I would do um, the deliveries of the tonic and a steamer and they, it would literally wake them up immediately. So this kind of put my business online. Mm -hmm. I do online consultations for those who can't get to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I was running my consultations, especially when we were on complete lockdown. Um, people can do online consultations. This is how, this is basically where House of comes from. Mm. And also just for traditional practices, just to make it more attractive, for mm. it to look more beautiful, mm. for people to want to walk into my shop like they walk into a, any other shop that mm. just doesn't freak you out but says, come and have a look at me. Mm. And then LMF, the Latoya Makhene Foundation, is also another foundation that... Um, yeah, that I am a director of and started during COVID as well because lockdown had caused a lot of traumatic experiences for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. People who were used to going and selling maguinha or fat cakes mm -hmm. or whatever on the street couldn't do that. People were basically at a point where they, are, they, they couldn't make money. You know, people were going hungry. And so it started really, really with us doing food drives, mm -hmm. us getting food parcels, doing soup kitchens, in disimpoverished areas, and that's how LMF oh, wow. really started. But outside of that, we focus on GBV, um, LGBTQI um, issues. We And for me, one of the biggest thing is abuse towards children and women, mm -hmm. you know. So we also always try to create a safe space where people have a safe space to get to where if they need to get away from someone who's going to kill them or something. Mm. Oh, you know, wow. it's, yeah. You're very inspiring, man. Actor, model, uh, singer, <laughs> sangoma, entrepreneur. I mean, wow. And, and everything going on with all of that. Yeah. I know it might be a difficult question, but what may we expect from you moving forward in your career? Uh, definitely. The music is going to be one of the big focuses. Mm. You know, it's, I think that's really, really, I just need to release this album now. Mm. I need to get that out. Um, that's really where my heart is going to be. Um, what else? There's some work that's coming up where I'm going to be working in the background um, on certain shows, certain productions. So you won't necessarily see me on the screen, but you will see me as part of the creatives in the background. And I'm really excited about these types of projects. Um, and also just seeing how the the industry and the world has now gotten to a point where they're saying, no, man, we're shooting this kind of a series. This woman is not only an actress, but she's a traditional healer. See if she can come on as an advisor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's beautiful for 
channels to be opening up like that for me. But my biggest, 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 biggest thing is really just let's get the music out, eh? Hey? Yeah. I think the music has suffered very enough. Excited. <laughs> I think the music has taken enough of a backlog. Yeah. You know, let's keep keep everything else afloat, but let's let the music be the biggest thing that I'm focusing on. So you, you, think, you think this year we will be able to get that album from you? Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. This is great. This is great. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Latoya, it was an absolute, absolute pleasure meeting you. And, you know, you're so humble. You're really humble. And, like, you know, thank you for being the person you are. And, you know, thank you, thank you for coming on the show, you know, and uh, come to our little company. You know, we really appreciate it. Uh, from our side, you know, firstly, you know, as soon as you walk through the doors, you're part of the family, you know. Yay. You're part of, uh, you know, so you must feel welcome to come through whenever you want to. And uh, from our side, to thank you, you know, we we throwing in a uh, photo shoot at the value of six grand there. So uh, you set it up with Eve and uh, let's do this cool creative photo shoot whenever Yay. you're ready. You know, but uh, we wish you nothing but the best. And, uh, you know, wherever we could uh, add uh, uh, our little two cents to improve and help you move forward please man you know where we are and uh, you know uh, feel I will take you up on it yeah you must be careful what you say no, no, you this must. better not be on must. camera Hollywood no, talk no this is this is we <laughs> legit we, we legit you can speak to the guys we legit I'll take you up on it <laughs> you know I'll, I'll actually even say something but I'll say it off camera you know but please it, I want you to take us up it, on it has <laughs> it has no it has been an incredible and genuine pleasure to have you, you here on the show thank you very much for coming i know you're probably an incredibly busy individual so please thank you very much that's latoya everybody this is maddie gray this is kush we are at concast at kong republic and this is the end of our show don't forget to go and hit that subscribe button and let us know what you think thank you Kong Republic I like Kong. Speaking your truth on the mic Kong. Hit the subscribe and like Time to Kong cause.